Today, more than a billion dollars exits Binance after the crypto exchange reaches a multi-billion dollar settlement with the U.S. government. And Steven Lovka, head of private clients at Swan Bitcoin, weighs in on what's next for the industry following that settlement. Welcome to CNBC's Crypto World. I'm Talia Kaplan. Crypto markets are mixed after that bombshell criminal settlement with Binance yesterday. We'll have all the details on that in just a second, but first, let's take a look at crypto prices. By noon Eastern, Bitcoin traded around $36,300, while Ether rose to around $2,030. Binance's BNB token fell more than 10%, though, as the crypto exchange saw more than a billion dollars in outflows. Okay, let's focus on Binance and that settlement with U.S. law enforcement. On Tuesday, the company's CEO, Xinping Zhao, pleaded guilty to federal criminal charges as part of a $4.3 billion settlement with the Department of Justice. Zhao and others were charged with violating the Bank Secrecy Act by failing to implement an effective anti-money laundering program, or AML. Zhao also willfully violated U.S. economic sanctions in what prosecutors say was a deliberate and calculated effort to profit from the U.S. market without implementing controls required by U.S. law. On X, CZ said he made mistakes and must take responsibility. As part of taking responsibility, he also announced in that same post that he was stepping down as CEO of the company. Now, we'll come back to the rest of CZ's 2,400-character post in just a second, but let's keep talking about what exactly the U.S. government alleged along with the details of the settlement. Treasury Secretary Janet Yellen said that Binance allowed bad actors to make more than 100,000 transactions that supported terrorism from the likes of al-Qaeda and ISIS the narcotics trade, and more. The exchange also allowed more than 1.5 million digital currency trades that violated U.S. sanctions. On top of that, we learned that Binance developed a way to notify VIP users if they became the subject of a law enforcement inquiry. We're here today to announce the Treasury Department's historic action, the largest enforcement action in Treasury's history against Binance, the world's largest virtual currency exchange for its consistent and egregious violations of U.S. anti-money laundering and sanctions law. Protecting the U.S. financial system and through that the global financial system is core to the Treasury Department's mission. And ever since Binance launched its convertible virtual currency platform it has knowingly evaded the U.S. laws designed to protect these systems. Over more than three years, FinCEN, OFAC, and IRS criminal investigation thoroughly investigated key aspects of Binance's activities. Our work revealed that Binance claimed to have exited the U.S. market years ago, but actually did not retaining U.S. users and other significant ties with the United States. So with this settlement, Binance will forfeit $2.5 billion to the U.S. government and pay a $1.8 billion fine. Importantly, though, the exchange can continue to operate, but now must follow some new rules. The company will make a complete exit from the U.S. market first and foremost. It will also have to step up its compliance program to meet AML rules, and there will be an independent party verifying its compliance. There's also the CEO spot, which has been left vacant, as we mentioned earlier. CZ announced that Richard Tang, the former CEO of Abu Dhabi Global Markets and global head of regional markets for Binance, will take over. Tang said in his own ex post that he accepted the role so the company can continue to meet and exceed the expectations of stakeholders while achieving its core mission, the freedom of money. As for CZ himself, he says he'll be taking a break first, then doing some passive investing, although he also is currently released on a $175 million bond, had to pay a $50 million fine, and faces sentencing on February 23rd. The New York Times reports that CZ faces up to 18 months in prison, but prosecutors could seek more. Now, after the news broke yesterday, Patrick Hillman, Binance's former chief strategy officer, spoke to CNBC's last call. Here's what he had to say. Over the last year, the company has been you know, derided and it has been accused of FTX-like crimes, market manipulation, stealing user funds, fraud. And you know, today the government laid out its case, which was a good one, by the way. And none of those really um, you know, uh, you know, combative 
accusations or allegations are in there as they shouldn't be. Now, the reality is Binance made some serious mistakes in the early days. They did not have KYC. They should have. And for that reason, today's settlement is fair and the outcome is fair. And so I think for the most part, the industry sees this as an opportunity now to continue to move forward and grow. And it's going to be the same opportunity for Binance as a company as well. All right, sticking with the Binance settlement for our main story. Right after the news conference held by the DOJ, the U.S. Treasury Department, and CFTC yesterday, I spoke with Stephen Lubka, head of private clients at Swan Bitcoin, about all the developments involving the crypto exchange. He also weighs in on what's next for Binance and the industry as a whole. We learned that Xinping Zhao pleaded guilty to violating the Bank Secrecy Act and is stepping down from his role as CEO of Binance. The DOJ, U.S. Treasury Department, and CFTC announced an agreement with Binance over alleged money laundering and sanctions violations. The crypto company must now pay $4.3 billion in penalties and forfeitures. What was your reaction to these developments involving Binance, and what does it signal to the crypto industry? Yeah, so on one hand, it's not surprising that these charges were brought to Binance. I think in the industry, in my position, the idea that Binance was going to escape scot-free or that CZ was going to get off without any charges seemed extremely unlikely. Um, that being said, like this is in some, in some capacities, uh, somewhat of a win for Binance in that they continue to operate. The company will continue to operate and CZ is not going to jail. So those are some, I mean, definitely some variables which could have been on the table that were not. It's a financial settlement, not so much. Now, there could still be new information. The DOJ is going to come into Binance and they're going to be going through their books and they're going to have compliance officers in there for the next two to three years. So there could be more information that comes to light. Um, but at this at this stage, it seems kind of more of like a middle ground between both extremes. Now, during a news conference, we heard Attorney General Merrick Garland say that Binance failed to comply with federal laws and pretended to comply. He said Binance prioritized its profits over the safety of the American people. Now, during that same news conference, Treasury Secretary Janet Yellen said Binance knowingly evaded U.S. laws and pointed to critical gaps in anti-money laundering practices. She said that Binance instructed staff to withhold information from law enforcement. She added that Binance failed to report suspicious transactions involving illegal narcotics and terrorism. She pointed to more than 100,000 transactions associated with terrorist groups, including Al Qaeda and ISIS. She said that Binance processed transactions but never filed a single suspicious activity report. What do you think about those statements and Binance's alleged role in supporting illicit activities, including terrorism? Yeah, so I think two things there. One is, you know, that's not surprising in many ways. I mean, Binance was known to not be the most compliant company in the world, right? Like these these are not shocking claims or revelations. Um, but there is one thing I, I would, we should be careful though of conflating this, which is Binance's activity with these larger claims and narratives that common get commonly get proposed that uh, Bitcoin or other crypto assets are such a huge problem for crime and illicit activity. When you look at the statistics, it's at like a fraction of 1% of all Bitcoin transactions have anything to do with illicit activity and the totals across uh, Bitcoin and even other digital assets. It is a very small part. It is a, it is so much smaller. The use of the dollar in illicit activity dwarfs the total sum of all financial crimes committed with Bitcoin or committed with other crypto assets. So it's important to hold both of those that yes, Binance was a bad actor, but this shouldn't be used as evidence, in my opinion, that, uh, you know, it's some, uh, you know, referendum on Bitcoin. Now, Treasury Secretary Yellen said Binance must report suspicious transactions it failed to report to date and establish an effective anti-money laundering program. Do you think everything she outlined is enough for people to trust Binance again after all of these revelations involving the crypto exchange? I don't think so. No, I don't think so. I don't think that that trust is going to come rushing back. And... Um, I also think Binance is going to lose users over this. I think there is a portion of their users that 
selectively used Binance because of lax compliance. And with more robust compliance, I think those users will probably go elsewhere. Another big story. Fidelity recently joined the race for a spot Ether ETF. The move follows BlackRock's proposed spot Ether ETF. And both firms are also waiting to hear whether they'll get approved to launch spot Bitcoin ETFs. We also recently learned that the SEC pushed decisions on the spot ETF proposals from Franklin Templeton and Global X to next year. What do you think will happen with all those applications? Do you think they'll actually get approved? And if they do, what will it mean for the crypto industry? Yeah, absolutely. I think it's a 90% plus probability that we see a spot Bitcoin ETF uh, approved in Q1 of next year. I think we're quite close. I think those firms have been going back and forth with the SEC. They've been in dialogues. They've been updating their filings. That's not something we've seen before. So previously, the SEC just denied the applications. But currently, we're seeing those companies talk with the SEC, revise the filing, talk with the SEC, revise the filing. There's a back and forth going on there that's new and hasn't happened before. It makes me quite confident we're going to see that approval, uh, as well as obviously the big names that are backing these things. Um, I think the Ether ETF is much more speculative that that approval happens uh, in the same time frame, uh, given some of these securities complaints. Um, but I do think the Bitcoin ETF is very likely to be approved. Uh, and I think it's an important moment for the industry. There's two categories here. There is the kind of what I'd call like the mechanical category of X number of dollars go into that vehicle and buy Bitcoin. And that number's in the billions. So that drives up the price. There's just new dollars that couldn't access it before or wouldn't access it before that come in and buy it. Um, but then there's kind of this other, this other, um, category where many investors will see this as a regulatory blessing. It'll say, okay, Bitcoin is okay here. The SEC has clearly said that Bitcoin is okay. They have approved the spot Bitcoin ETF after years or a decade even of denying it um, close to a decade for various reasons. And so the average investor is going to think, okay, those concerns must have been resolved. Therefore, like Bitcoin has been de-risked. So I do see it as an important moment for the industry. Now, Lepka also discussed other headlines involving crypto exchanges, including the SEC's lawsuit against Kraken for allegedly operating an unregistered platform and Bittrex Global's announcement that it's shutting down. You'll be able to check out the full interview at cnbc.com slash crypto world. OK, that's all for today, but we'll be back again on Friday after the Thanksgiving holiday and we'll see you then.